Hey, Jill. You know the old sugar daddy. They be tricking. They tell them, girl. I said you can have whatever you like. You like. I said you can have whatever you like. You like. Yeah. I'm the CEO of Beverly Group. Beverly Group has been in existence since 1856. And to continue that longevity, we've conducted a strategic review to summarize what we should be doing in the coming years. As you know, Beverly has a very wide international client staff, an iconic trademark, and a prestigious brand name. The following slides will summarize our key findings. Our first point is to continue investing in specific high growth markets. Previous investments have introduced our brand to emerging markets such as India and China. However, given underlying economic and demographic trends, which are fueling growth in those markets, we believe that we should now establish ourselves there, just as competitive as. Our biggest challenge to achieving this aim has been cultural barriers. However, we believe that certain investments in acquiring specific cultural knowledge in those markets will help us achieve this goal. Our second point. Increased investment in the retail operation and focus on the higher end of the market. We believe that this will help improve our brand image and by specifically targeting locations associated with shoppers at a high disposable income, we hope we believe that this will improve our operating margin. Additionally, our existing stores will be standardized worldwide. We believe that this will help this will increase the appeal to our international consumers by having a familiar layout and a familiar theme. Studies have shown that this will encourage impulse buying. However, given the negative macroeconomic environment of the retail sector at the moment, we have paused this operation and we will only continue once the retail sector shows signs of recovery. Our third point. We will increase our focus on the non-apparel market. In other words, we're talking about the accessories product, which offer higher sales volumes and will increase our market share because each item costs less to buy for the consumer. We will achieve this, one, through establishing accessories only stores, and secondly, through pioneering the luxury trend by investing in the market. Fourth point, we have established a successful franchise. However, we have identified further opportunities which can be exploited to maximize our profit. Number one, increasing sales. We can increase sales and that will increase our revenue. We intend to do this by targeting our existing customers to encourage them to shop more frequently. We believe that we can achieve that through increasing the rate of product refreshing and by continuing to offer seasonal product range. The second way in which we can capitalize on our franchise is to expand our licensing operation. In other words, we want to put our brand on more products. For example, City Guide with the Burberry brand mark.
our fifth point. Our fifth point. We've been undertaking the vertical integration of our supply chain, and this is something that we will continue. It has increased the control we have over the manufacturing process of our product, and this has helped improve the quality of our form. This has been achieved by increasing the horizontal communication in our organization between designers and manufacturers. It also facilitates increased innovation by allowing the two-way exchange of technical expertise between designers and manufacturers. Secondly, the supply chain integration will help improve our earnings. That will be achieved through cost synergies and by sharing profits with the suppliers. Furthermore, we can build on that by licensing our brand name to our manufacturer. That way we can charge a royalty fee when our suppliers produce products for our competitors. The argument for the cost basis of saving, of increasing our earnings through vertical integration of our supply chain has been successfully proved by our competitor, LV Hemage. They saved 19.5% on material costs and improved their operating margin from 7% to 9% through vertical integration of their supply chain. The third argument for vertical supply chain integration is to decrease the power of suppliers and buyer. Basically, this reduces our counterparty risk because we will be relying on a fewer number of external organizations. Our sixth point, building on our strategy of increasing our focus on the high end of the market, we aim to offer a more personalized customer care. This will increase brand loyalty and increase the number of customers which we turn, and hence increase our revenue. We can achieve this in store by offering consultants to individual clients, and in the non apparel section, we can offer personalized services such as printing their name or a message into accessories. Another way we can achieve this is through offering after-sales services, for example, by offering complementary services such as repairs, delivery, or gift wrapping or greeting card services. We can also offer a personalized marketing solution to individual customers by storing their information on the database should they consent. To summarize, we're trying to do our best for, her, for our shareholders. We're trying to maximize our profits and to manage our risk. To maximize our profits, we're pursuing investments in areas which offer the highest operating margin. For example, as you saw, we're pursuing the accessories product and we're pursuing investments in emerging markets. To manage our risk, we're being responsive to our environment. For example, our investments in the retail sector, as you saw, have been paused and will remain paused until the macroeconomic environment in the retail sector improves. Just to recap, Hey Jim. Hey Jim.